Life might have started beneath the surface of the earth, right here next to volcanic ocean vents or inside the hot crust itself. In 1977, the vessel Elvin found a complex ecosystem deep in the surface of the Pacific Ocean. And this was next to volcanic vents. We call these vents black smokers because of the superheated fluid that comes up of the sieves creating these chimneys. So this is where we think life might have began, but there are also signs that shows that life on Earth actually extends back to when there was a cosmic bombardment. So there are theories that suggest that actually life began on Mars and it later traveled here to where wrong. In this video, we get to all that and what is life? Where and when did life begin? Where else can we find life and how did life actually begin? So for most of this video, we'll be tracking water and this is the origin of life where water comes from. This is my third installment in this type of video where I focus on astrobiology and evolution. I'm proud of the work that I've done, but I'm still not an expert in this field. But as a physics student, I feel like I have an obligation to actually find answers to this burning question. So why is water essential to life? There are multiple reasons that I can focus on in this subject, but the ones that I want to focus on on this video that are necessary are these ones. The first one is that water is an amazing solvent. So substances can easily dissolve in them and it can transfer or transport these nutrients to the cell and the cell can use water to actually wash away the waste. The second thing is that it is the most abundant substance on earth that is in liquid form. And of course, it is necessary for water to exist in all three phases so that life can exist on earth. For example, water freezing on top of oceans protected the life that was evolving beneath. Water also allows diversity of climates, habitats, and complex synergies between physical and chemical reactions. The Miller-Urey experiment shows us that we should be focusing more on water in order for us to understand the origin of life. In 1953, Stanley Miller and Harold Urey reproduced organic compounds in a lab. And these compounds were present during early air. They were trying to reproduce the conditions of ocean's edge under a reducing atmosphere. And this actually reminds me of what's happening down in good down. <laughs> so this reminds me of what's actually happening in Titan right now. It has a reducing atmosphere and this actually makes us think there might be life out there and we're going to get to that in this video. So stay tuned. The miller experiment found that only after a week, 15% of the carbon that was originally made and gas has become simple carbon compounds. And these compounds turn into complex other molecules such as amino acids. And amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, which means that these were the building blocks of life itself. What is the origin of water? Since we understand that water is so essential to the origin of life, let us explain or actually see where water came from. So it is unclear why Earth has the most water out of all the planets in our solar system, but we have some ideas of how water got here. And these are the ideas that I feel like are the most credible and I can share them with you. The well cooled down to where all the outgassed volatile components were on the atmosphere with pressure to stabilize and be retained as liquid water. Number two, hydrate minerals. There was a slow leakage of water that was stored inside the Earth's rock. Number three, volcanic activities. The water vapor from volcanic eruptions formed the rain. Number four, water in the development of the Earth. So water may actually be part of the material that formed the Earth. So water was here during the formation of the Earth itself. Number five, extraplanetary resources, comets, transneutronian objects, or water-rich meteorites, protoplanets. These collided with the Earth and brought the world's out. So let's find the origin of water in the universe, thus finding ancient life, life that existed way before Earth. We have to go to a star just like the sun. As it exhausts its nuclear fuel and the core collapses, the outer layers are expelled into planetary nebulae. So during the stage, new nuclei are created quickly in the nuclear reaction because of the flood of neutrons. So these are heavy elements and they are generated by nuclear synthesis or radioactive decay. So the material released at the end of life of these stars created this huge interstellar cloud of gas and gas. So this dust is made of silicate, carbon, iron, water ice, methane, 
ammonia and other organic compounds. So to find the first life, we have to track down the first death in the universe. I feel like there's some sort of synergy in the universe. I don't know what to call it, but it's something beautiful. When did life start on Earth? Before I explain that, let me explain what is life itself because maybe some people have no idea. So the simplest way or the way that I see fit for this particular video is life is, you should have an organized structure to perform a certain task. A cell as a fundamental unit of life. Perform anabolic and catabolic reaction to sustain life as in metabolism. It should be able to perform homeostasis. It should have growth, reproduction, adaptation of an organism in an environment, actually it should be able to evolve. So this is the simplest way I can explain what a living organism is. I'm sure there are simple ways you can find or to our sources below and check out what life is. In Western Australia, we actually found the oldest fossil of a living organism and it dates back to 3.5 billion years. But it had photosynthesis. It was similar to the bacteria that we have right now called cyanobacteria. But photosynthesis is a complex process. So this means that the organism had to evolve and evolution takes a long time. When we date sedimentary rocks from Greenland, they date back a minimum 3.8 billion years old. And they show traces of carbon with changed isotopic ratios, which is a sign of biological activity. If this is correct, then we must accept that life is at least 4 billion years old. But there's a problem with this because the solar system itself formed 4.5 billion years ago. And it was a chaotic, mass with dust swelling around for about 700 million years. During this time, planets were being pounded by debris and this primordial material formed large objects. Let's just imagine one of these impactors actually hit Earth and it was 500 kilometers in diameter. This will immediately strip away the atmosphere, replacing it with a blanket of rock vape. And this will be at temperatures of about 3000 degrees Celsius, which will boil all the oceans, creating a layer of steam that will take months for it to rain down. And these conditions will last for 10,000 years and the surface of the earth will be exposed, thus sterilizing everything. So if we take the Greenland test to be true, we have to believe that life began way before these cosmic on badness. So how could life survive all that chaos? These organisms have to have been extremophilic organisms or life began on another planet such as Mars. The number of integrals between Mars and the Earth has been established and the experiments have been done to confirm microbes could survive the rigors of the journey through space if it is protected within rock. So where did life begin on Earth? Charles Darwin, I don't know if you've heard of him, he speculated life started in a warm little pond where all types of chemical substances accumulate over time. And then complex molecules arise from the energy of the sun and then life forms accidentally. So this model of the origin of life is called a primordial suit. This leads me to, is there life in Titan? There are important differences between Earth and Titan, mainly surface temperatures. But there are a lot of similarities between Titan of today and early Earth. Both of them have a dense atmosphere, mostly made of molecular nitrogen and an environment rich in organic compounds. There are a lot of conditions necessary for probiotic chemistry to evolve and to become complex organic systems. But the ones that I focused on that are important for this video so that we understand how life began are Titan has a dense, mildly reducing atmosphere. Remember the Miller-Urey experiment that proved that we can get to these organic compounds by doing the experiment. It's the presence of methane and the presence of several sources of energy in the atmosphere, such as UV light, energetic electrons from Saturn's magnosphere and cosmic rays. And it is the presence of liquid hydrocarbon at the surface. Doubt, but doubt. 